Welcome back to Extended Play from Metreon in San Francisco. Icewind Dale was a role-playing game out from Interplay that does resemble Interplay's other major RPG title, Baldur's Gate. Now, the expansion pack, Heart of Winter, is available, which is definitely very good news for people who finished Baldur's Gate 2, but is it a good game in its own right? Far to the north, beyond the wind-swept peaks of the spine of the world, Dwell a people whose Black Isle Studios returns to the frozen north once again in Heart of Winter, the official expansion to their popular role playing game, Icewind Dale. Heart of Winter offers up a brand new quest involving a barbarian chieftain who's been possessed by the spirit of an ancient dragon. He also has quite an extensive barbarian resume. I announce Wolfgang. Blessed and guided by the spirit of Jared, son of Fengar the Fearless, slayer of the dwarven spy in single combat, slayer of the great bear, now king of the tribe of the great world. You get the point. This quest will take you to a new town and across four sprawling wilderness areas. Fans of the original should know just what to expect here, mainly trudging around some bleak tundra, fighting hordes of monsters, and entering the homes of complete strangers uninvited. But back to the fighting. It comes in two shades, hard and harder. This expansion is designed for characters who have reached at least ninth level. Luckily, if you already deleted your characters from Icewind Dale, there's a pre-made party set up for Heart of Winter all ready to go. The Infinity Engine is still looking pretty good, and thankfully, Heart of Winter takes advantage of several tweaks that were introduced in Baldur's Gate 2, such as higher screen resolution and a new experience point cap. In the end, though, it's all about gameplay, and Black Isle has taken the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, to heart. While not offering anything innovative to the mix, Heart of Winter manages to retain the flavor of the original. Extended play gives Heart of Winter a 3 out of 5. Between Icewind Dale, Baldur's Gate, and the upcoming Neverwinter Nights, it's hard to imagine that at one point people thought the PC role-playing was dead. Since the announcement that the Dreamcast is going to be phased out, many people have forgotten that what really made Sega special wasn't the systems, but the games. This should be a message that's made loud and clear when you check out the Sega Smash Pack. The bulk of the Sega Smash Pack is devoted to the heavy hitters of the 16-bit Genesis days. The Streets of Rage is here, along with the lycanthropic Altered Beast the classic Golden Axe, and the ninja actioner Revenge of Shinobi. The classic role-playing game Shining Force and Fantasy Star 2 are also included. Columns is present for the puzzle gamer, and platformer desires are met with a unique Vector Man and a little favorite called Sonic the Hedgehog. Also included is Wrestle War, which was never released in the U.S. The last two games in the pack are the ubiquitous Sega Swirl and an arcade port of Virtua Cop 2. Compared to their Genesis counterparts, the games in the Smash Pack look brighter and sharper. Granted, they aren't going to blow anyone away today, but once upon a time, this was cutting edge. The sound is a serious problem. Anything that relied on the Genesis MIDI library is unrecognizable from the original and is horrendous. Nonetheless, these games are about gameplay, and if you're comfortable turning off the audio and playing your own tunes, it's still worth checking out. Extended Play gives the Sega Smash Pack a 3 out of 5. When it comes to hotly anticipated games, nothing matches the fervor surrounding this next title. The sequel to Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty, wowed everybody at E3. Well, now it's available in Japan on a demo of Konami's Zone of Enders, or Zoe. So we picked up a copy, because we kind of thought you might be interested. Dying for some solid snake footage? Don't fly off the handle, because our boy in the bandana is finally back with Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. It's your standard die-hard-on-a-boat routine. Of course, you've got the highly secretive Metal Gear Ray, and it's your job to prevent Russian terrorists from taking it. Compared to the first Metal Gear Solid, there's more variety in the way you handle Solid Snake and how your foes react to you. The enemy is more organized, though less predictable. If you do manage to take someone out, say, with a tranquilizer, you can always just shove them in a locker. 
Expect mind-blowing amounts of detail wherever you go. Everything you shoot will leave a mark, especially if you're stuck in a firefight in the pantry. What a mess. Try shooting the ice bucket at the wet bar, or just watch the ice melt. Metal Gear Solid 2 will be out early 2002, yet if this demo is any indication of what the full version will be, Sons of Liberty will be nothing short of phenomenal. Coming up on Extended Play, we do the hand jive with our new game gear and go to the slopes for pointers on how to ace SSX. Welcome back to Extended Play at Metreon in San Francisco. Now, as we saw earlier, Dance Dance Revolution is getting gamers on their feet. Now, for those gamers who don't want to exert themselves quite that much and stay on the couch, here's a peripheral that'll let you get rhythmic and slap yourself silly. The latest installment in Enix's Bust a Move dance series is Dance Summit 2001. Now it's only available on import, but it does have a really cool peripheral that you can use with it that we wanted to show you. It's out from ASCII, and it starts with this little purple joypad that looks just like a standard PlayStation 2 controller, only a lot smaller. The fun part are the grips. Now, as you can see, your standard PlayStation symbols are on the grips. They slide over your hand. So, everywhere you have to hit a square, boom, you hit a square. Need to hit a triangle, boom, okay, go. You hit the triangle. Now, both of these cost about $68 each. They come separately on import. While this peripheral has very limited use for non-rhythmic games, I guess you could always use it for the torture scene in Metal Gear Solid, or not. When the PlayStation 2 was first shown at E3, Capcom's Onimusha, which is a Resident Evil-style samurai fantasy game, was a solid standout. Well, it's finally made its way onto store shelves, and the review is on its way. So, here's a look at the intro to tide you over. <laughs> the intro looks good, but we're going to have to wait for our upcoming review to find out how Onimusha actually plays. Now, the snowboarding season is slowly coming to its end, and we realize that you only will have games to turn to for that extreme winter sports satisfaction. So we decided to whip together this strategy guide for SSX. Snowboarding. This sport has dominated the mountain scene in the past decade and is showing no signs of slowing. But sometimes even the most die-hard boarders need to take a well-deserved rest from the slopes. Uh, I fell snowboarding. Uh... Oh! Now I'm in a cast. <laughs> sometimes it's nice just to relax and play the PlayStation. That's right, if you can't go to the mountain, all you have to do is bring the mountain to you. And what better way than EA's SSX for the PS2, a favorite among the snowboarding community. With the combinations and the tricks and the graphics, um, I think it definitely beats all the other games by far. But let's face it, the game can get a little tricky. I didn't know Pax could have been that way. That's why we decided to brave the cold and head up to the Kirkwood Skiing Resort in Northern California to get the expert opinion of these pro boarders slash gamers. When you're starting a race, make sure to rock back and forth. You hit it just right, you can shoot out a lot quicker. Go to the analog and push straight up, you'll fly out of the gate and pretty much smoke everyone right away. 
And when you do shoot out, be careful because you're going to be in the air and you're prone to flip over or turn to the side. And that's not always good because you'll fall and lose your advantage. My SSX tip for the day is shortcuts. You got to learn all the shortcuts. When you're racing, your character's not going to be able to compete straight on with the computer character. Know when to use them because when you're going for a medal, you don't want to use them because usually it'll take away good jumps or a good opportunity to score points. Mm, checkpoint. When you're lining up for a jump, make sure you're going straight on. Hold down X button, um, go to the diagonals, and when you release, he'll flip and spin. You uh, hit any of these upper buttons, he'll grab, and then you can tweak with the square button. The boost uh, button definitely helps because it allows you to go a lot higher and do more spins. Usually I pick a character, I stick with it, I run through a race, first time out you might win a bronze, then you use your experience points, build up your character's tricks, trick areas, that way you're going to max out your character stats and be the ultimate SSX player. Yeah, that works. For another look at that strategy guide, go to extendedplay.com. There you can also find the full reviews for everything covered on today's show. And you can always join us in our chats on Monday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern. Well, we'd like to give a great big thanks to Metreon for hosting us today. So, until next time, game, game over. over.